All right, so last week I posted about how I was building a SketchUp model to use for comic backgrounds, and there was a lot of interest in how I was doing it. So I promised I would make a tutorial that I would hopefully get up by this weekend, and look at me, I'm getting it done on time. What a concept. Okay, so what this tutorial is going to be about is how to make a background like this in SketchUp. Uh, this background took me about 20 minutes to render and get into Photoshop. This is not counting building the model. Building the model is a separate thing. This tutorial will not be about building the model. This is just about how to make it look pretty for Photoshop. So we're going to discuss how to get to this point with it. Um, we'll start off with this is the line art that you get directly from SketchUp through rendering. Uh, you'll notice there's a few issues, like it doesn't always render well on curves, uh, there's certain things that get a little over-rendered, it all really depends on uh, your specific export settings, what kind of style you want, all of that. Uh, so you'll get that, we'll talk about how to get that from there, and then we'll touch it up with just general inking in Photoshop. This took me about 10 minutes to go from this to this and then eventually you'll be able to use it to make something pretty like this. Uh, so we'll start off in SketchUp. Uh, my model isn't quite finished yet. There's, you know, no second story. Uh, but it's good enough for this tutorial. So again, this tutorial is not going to be about how to build a model in SketchUp. SketchUp is a very easy program to learn. It comes with tutorials. It'll take you about half an hour to pick up at most. Super simple. So you make your model that you want to use for your backgrounds. Uh, this house belongs to my character Vivian, who, yes, it's missing a whole side and a lot of other things. She's a fun person. So you will scroll around until you can get the perspective you want. And to get the perspective you want, go up to the camera tool right here. You can go to two point perspective which will, you know, perfect two-point perspective. Um, you can also scroll around. And then a super helpful thing for getting some better perspective is to go up to camera again and click on field of view right here. This will let you kind of get some of the more dramatic effects. It's going to look really funny because there's no second story, but it'll serve our purposes. So, you know, you can get really weird there. It's all up to you, whatever you want. Uh, the more advanced version of SketchUp does have more perspective tools, uh, but it's up to you if you want to get that. If you get it, try and find a way to do it with a student license because then it's actually affordable. Otherwise, just make it work. Uh, so once you have that done, you're going to go over here to the Styles tab, and it may be closed, so you may have to open it up. And then you're going to go to this little drop down, and you're going to go to Photo Modeling. And you're going to select one of the photo modeling styles. This one you don't want because it has all the weird little dotted lines. Let's go ahead and select the second one, then hit Edit, go to the little this down so you can see the whole thing. Go to the wireframe one and hit, click on the blue square, drag it to black. Woohoo, you now have a black. Uh, now you'll see it's a little messy here, that's okay. And then you're gonna go to, so these are all different things that you can uh, have in there. So you're gonna go to the last one and you're gonna get rid of guides section planes, section cuts, and model axis. That'll get rid of all the other little things that aren't technically part of your model and just serve as ways to help you build. So once you've got this, you've got it at the angle you want, you've got it at the modeling style you want, you're going to go to File, Export, 2D Graphic, and you're going to do a JPEG of it. So once you click Options, you're going to get this little window right here. You want to set it to the best possible quality, and what size you export at is going to affect the level of detail you get in your final render. Um, 
what you see on the screen isn't necessarily what your final render is going to look like. It all depends on how you export it. So you're going to have to play around with it to find something that works for you. I personally would advise doing at least 5,000 pixels wide. Um, I generally do about 6,000. It's entirely up to you and just you got to play around with it. I had to do about 40 different rendering tests uh, to find the initial style that I wanted to get. So just play with it see what works and once you have that size you're going to click OK we're going to name our file export one and we're going to export it depending on your computer it could take more or less time thankfully I have a good computer so it's not dying at the amount of crap I have in this model but if you don't have a good computer you might have to play with it a little more Okay, so now we've got the first export done. This is the first layer of your line art. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna get the more sketchy style. Um, uh, Photoshop, Photoshop, SketchUp has a lot of different styles. So you're gonna go to sketchy edges. And again, play with it, find one you like. Now, I understand this kind of looks like crap. A lot of your lines went away. It's not showing the best detail. Um, I know, I know, it's okay. It will look different when you export it. This is especially true with the sketchy styles. A lot of the detail that seems like it's vanished will come back when you export. And it will also depend on what kind of shapes you have in your model, how far you're zoomed in, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of factors, so you just have to play with it. Um, I, so, you know, play with all the styles. I personally use marker wide as my second layer. So you're going to click on that and then you're going to go to edit again. You're going to go back to this one and see where it says extension right here. Yeah. Get rid of that because what that does is it makes your lines all a little longer than they actually are and gives you like weird corners and things. Uh, you don't want those. I mean, you might want those. I personally don't want those. Um, you can also play around with the other stuff. I set the level of detail to about in eh, 90, 95% on this slider. Um, again, just play with it. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So again, we're gonna go up to File, Export, 2D Graphic. Same settings as before. Make sure you are exporting it at the same size as your initial one. So we're going to name this one export to voila exporting 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 all right cool so now we have our exports so now we're going to move over into photoshop so we're going to open you're going to open up your two exports all right so i understand it's still missing some things but that is why we made this first one. Now you have two options here. You can either take this first one and put it on a new layer all on its own and trace over top of it to get uh, your background. This is good if you can't uh, make SketchUp really match your style the way you want. It'll still save you a lot of time uh, when it comes to getting your backgrounds done, especially if you have a background that's constantly going to be repeated like this house is. So, you know, just draw over top of it the way you normally would, yada yada. I'm not going to make it pretty. You know what I mean. Or, second option, if you can get SketchUp to match, you'll go to your more sketchy one, select all of it, copy it, paste it right on top of your initial one, set it to multiply and voila. Now, obviously you're still going to need to do some touch ups like I mentioned. So that's as simple as making a new layer on top of all of it, go in with whatever you sketch with or ink with and quickly add in and touch up where you need to touch up. Um, Again, it's just a matter of figuring out what works for you and what works for the style of comic you're trying to make. So once you have all of that done, and I'm not going to do all of it, I'm just 
taking a moment to kind of show you. And it's not going to look as pretty as the other one because I'm kind of rushing. But, you know, play with it. Figure out what's going to work for you. And, you know, there's some stuff that you might want to go in and erase in the original line art from SketchUp, too. Uh, just have fun. Until you get something pretty. All right, so now you're going to go ahead. You're going to select all your line art layers. And you're going to merge them. So now you have one pretty line art layer. And you're going to set that to multiply. Now, if you're making a comic, you can copy this over, paste it into your comic however you want it to be in your comic. Uh, if you want just a single illustration, and even if you're doing a comic, honestly, go over to image, image size. So this has not exported at 300 DPI, which you want for your art. Um, so go ahead and unclick resample, go to 300. So that will get you, depending on your screen size, this ratio will be different, but it will shrink it down to a file size that's more than reasonable. It's about 11 by 17, which is what a lot of people work in for general illustration. So go ahead and do that. 300, that way you have it at the DPI, you want to be able to make prints and have everything look pretty. Click OK. Voila, you now have a 300 DPI background with a wonderful line art that took you about eh, 20 to 30 minutes to make, depending on how much touch up you have to do. So now you have your line art. You have your line art set to multiply, and you can begin to color underneath it exactly like you would if it was regular line art. Voila, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, have fun with it. Just play with it. SketchUp has a lot of options. If you do get the pro version, it has even more options. I personally don't have the pro version because I can't afford it, but it's got more than enough in the free version for you to be able to do a hell of a lot. And it saves so much time in getting comic backgrounds done for me, just because I love this house that I have for a setting, but obviously it's got a lot going on and it's going to be in a lot of scenes and I don't want to have to draw all of this every single time. So this is just, it provides a good base to work off of and it's super helpful. Um, I hope you guys find it helpful too. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to message me or shoot me an email. Um, also, if you found this tutorial useful, please consider leaving a tip on my Gumroad or subscribing to me on Patreon. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you find this useful.